The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Walters again. And as always, it is a pleasure to be able to share the word of the Lord with you. Has the Lord been good to you today? Oh, I know he has. If he has, come on, let's give him a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Give him thanks. Amen? Yes. Uh, certainly, we are grateful and thankful to all of you who've always uh, come and, sh and enjoy the word with us. And we share the word with you uh, from our hearts and from our souls simply because we love you. And it is our heart's desire that you be saved. Amen. Y'all know I'm, guess what? I'm the salvation preacher. Yes, I am. And I want to see you get saved. You know, let me slow it down just a moment. Uh, it's been an incredible year that we've all experienced. Uh, I'm not going to say it's been a bad year because the reality of it is we've survived up until this time. And we need to really look at things from a brighter side. Number one, the Lord has us closed in so that we can begin to take into account our lives and the things that are of utmost importance. Also that we need to slow down and, and think about where we are with him and what's going on in this world and where are we in prophecy? Where are we in scripture right now? And I, and I have taught quite a few things this year. Uh, and I'm going to get to those. And I'm also going to get to this wonderful subject that the Lord has given me. And I believe that's going to be a blessing. It's not going to be a long one. It's going to be, this is one of them shorties. Amen. Okay. So uh, we want to say thank you to those that have been supporting us. And we want to welcome those that have not taken the time to hear us and you're new. We want to welcome you. And if you'd like to also support us, we, we have supporters that support us in three different ways. Uh, they support us spiritually, they support us financially, and they support us physically. And so we want to share that information with you. Um, for those that want to support us financially, we use Cash App. And our Cash App ID is dollar sign Steve B. Walters. Amen. Again, if you want to support us financially, any donation is fine. We're happy with, with what you send and we appreciate it greatly. It is dollar sign Steve B. Walters. Okay. And so if you want to support us spiritually, please do so. How do you do that? It's real simple. All you do is ask Yah, ask God to pour his blessings on our ministry. How do you do it again? To say, Lord, pour your blessing out on Bishop Steve Walters' ministry. Amen. It's just that simple. That's all you got to do. And we greatly appreciate it. And if you want to, number three, support us physically. Guess what? You're already doing it by watching these telecasts, watching the videos. And, and also by sharing them and inviting other people to watch them. Amen. Share with others, invite other people to watch it live and, uh, and also leave a comment. Leave a comment. Let us know that you're watching. Like. Amen. Put a like on there. Let us know that you're watching. Amen. And, and actually, let us know where you're watching from because we seem to have people from all, all, all over the place, uh, from, different uh, countries and, and, and those that are in different states of, you know, the United States of America, go ahead and do that. If you're on YouTube, we want to also encourage you to like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification button. Amen? So that we can uh, keep you informed when the new video shows up. All right? So let's get, get to the word that the Lord has given us. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, talking to you on the subject of today, this night, 
and this day. I know that sounds a little strange, but 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 it's a word in there. Amen. And you know, again, as I was saying earlier, I've taught a lot of subjects, and, and we are moving toward the end of 2020. And I, so much has happened. And as I was saying earlier, the Lord has called, allowed us to be closed in, so to speak, so that we can take some time to really think where we're going, where we are. Amen? So that we can recognize what time we're living in. And also, I, I've taken the time to teach you and to show you uh, that this is also the time of the awakening. And what do you mean the awakening? The awakening of the true children of Yah, the true children of Israel. Amen. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about those that came uh, across through slavery in ships taken from the west coast of Africa and delivered here into the United States and the Caribbeans and, and the various uh, lands that they were deposited in as slaves. The Lord has shown through his word without a shadow of a doubt that we are the children of the Most High. And yet what has happened to us is that our identity has been taken away from us. Our language has been taken away from us. Amen. Our heritage has been taken away. Our history, our culture, everything has been taken away. But now the Lord is awakening us. And we are the time clock of prophetic fulfillment. Amen. And so why do you bring that up, Bishop? Because it helps us to understand the season that we're living in. We were under a 400 year curse being here uh, in bondage. And at the end of our 400 years, we find that the entire world is in trouble. Mm. Amen. We find that the whole world is in trouble and we are moving closer to the time of what? The one world government. With what? The one world religion. And with what? The one world currency. And we're also moving closer to the time of the return of the Lord. We're moving closer to the time of the, the last part of the first resurrection, which some folk call the rapture. Amen? But really what it is, it's the end of the first resurrection. Amen. And there's so much that's coming ahead. But the reality of, of this life is all that we ever have is today. And so, hence we have the subject. Today, this night, and this day. Amen. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter number three and verse number seven. We're going to read verse eight, 12, and verses 13. Again, what are we going to be reading? We're going to be reading the book of Hebrews, chapter three, verses seven, 12, and 13. Seven, eight, 12, and 13. All right, so let's go into the word of the Lord. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, to day, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Amen. Then it says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of temptation in the wilderness. Take heed. Brethren, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Harden not your heart. I'm going backwards again. Lord, have mercy. As in the provocation in the day of temptation. 
in the wilderness. I'm going to verse 12 again now. Watch what does it say. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to get to this now. Let's look at the next verse. But exhort one another. This is what we need to do. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, all we ever have, all we ever, 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 ever have is today. That's all we got is what? Today. Amen. And when we understand the time that we are living in, Lord have mercy, we, it, it behooves us to redeem the time. Why? Because these days are evil. And when we understand that the word of God is true, even by the signs of everything that we are seeing in the world, in the news, Lord, with our elections and with everything that's going on in the world, but we're still moving toward that one world government. And the Bible and the book of Revelation told us that this would be so. And since that is the case, how, everybody said, how much time do we have? We got today. What do we have? We have today. And all we ever have is today. What are you saying, Bishop Walters? I'm saying that tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The Holy Spirit said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't get hard hearted. Amen. So many of us are caught up with everything that's going on in our lives. And we were saying, well, Bishop, look, I ain't got time to hear about all this stuff. Let me tell you something. All you got is today. You don't, you ain't guaranteed tomorrow. And he's saying today, look, when tomorrow gets here, and if you live to see tomorrow, it's still, guess what it is? Today. All we have is today. We're not promised tomorrow. So in this day, today, while it is still call today. You need to be begin to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. God's word, Yah's word has told us that we will be living in this time. They're calling wrong right today. They're calling right wrong. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. When you look at everything that is thrown, look, listen, we are shut in, right? Most of the time, most of us are inside, right? And all we can do is look at what? Television and things of that nature. If you look at what is happening on television, all we're doing is being pushed. All the things that are against Yah, all the things that are against God. Wake up, open your eyes. Yes, I, I taught you all these different things, but most importantly, I taught you even those that are awakening and understanding that they are the true children of Israel, are of the kingdom of Judah. Amen. Even understanding that it's not enough. I told you this. Even understanding that we are in the end times. I know some folks saying we're not in the end times because the rapture hasn't taken place. That's because you have a misunderstanding of what it is and, and what the scriptures are saying. You've been taught things that will cause you not to recognize that we are in the end times. We are in them now. And now that you understand that, that's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough to know you're an Israelite. It's not enough to know that we're living in the end times. You got to know that you don't have as much time as you thought you had. No, Bishop, you know, you know, you know, a whole lot of things gotta happen. But how much time do you have to live is what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to say is you don't know if you're gonna make it to tomorrow. You don't know if you're gonna make it to the end of today, but you got right now. Amen. You got right now. And I'm, I'm, what I want to convey to you is that, look, you must be, you've got to be born again. 
Don't mess up today. Don't lose today. Oh, I'll wait until. No, you can't wait until tomorrow. You got to get it right today. You only have today. Look, everything that he said that was supposed to come to pass, it is coming. It has come to pass. It is coming to pass right now as we live, and it's going to come to pass. So I, as a salvation preacher, I'm urging you. I'm talking to somebody that don't have another day. I'm talking to somebody that's not going to see what we call tomorrow. I'm talking to you. The Holy Ghost says, if you will hear his voice, I want you to know that the Lord, amen, has solved the sin problem. He has fixed the sin problem by giving us Yeshua, by Jesus dying on the cross. Amen? Giving his life. Giving it. See, because, well, here's the thing about that. He had no sin. He did no sin. He was born, amen, without sin. So he never had to die. He didn't have to leave, uh, or lose his life. Amen? In fact, he says, no man, take my life. But I lay it down. And I'm going to take it up whenever I get ready. Are you listening? There has never been anybody that has died and then got up on their own but Yeshua. And he didn't have to die, but he did it in our place. He shed his blood because he was a man. And who sinned in the beginning? Our father, Adam. He sinned. Our mother, Eve. They sinned. And therefore, amen. All men die. Are you listening? And because all men die, guess what? There is a penalty to sin. Sin has a penalty. And what is the penalty? It is that second death known as the lake of fire. But all you got is today. I'm just trying to break it down. I'm trying to share this with you. Amen. Oh, what are you talking about? You're trying to scare us. Look, I'm trying to snatch some of you from the fire. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to snatch you. From the fire. Yes, if you have this right, if you get this right, then you can move forward. But if you don't have this right, you're in trouble. Are you listening? Thank you, Jesus. Today, I want you to hear his voice. Lord, have mercy. He says, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life. Freely. I want, I, I want you to come. I, I, I want you to hear this today. Listen, I got to tell you this. There was absolutely no other way. There was absolutely no other way out for us. No other way out but Jesus. He said, I am the way. How could he say that? Because, as I said before in the previous uh, message, he solved the sin problem. He dealt with the sin problem. We talking about sin. We ain't sinners. All, Bible, all have sin and come short of the glory of God. What's the problem with sin? Because the wages of sin is death. Are you listening? This is why we all die. And that's why. We are all heading toward that second death, which is the lake of fire, which burned with fire and brimstone forever and forever. Yah is just. And, and, the, and so a penalty has to be given. But also, he's loving. Also, he's caring. Also, he is compassionate. And he's saying, no, I got to fix this situation for my children. And so he created, guess who? A people called the children of Israel, that we might be the light, that we might show that there's only one God and that he, it is the true and the living Yah. Amen? He is the only, when the world was immersed, 
and serving a multiplicity of gods and serving a multiplicity of belief systems. He fixed it and he made a way for us and when there was no way. Are you listening? In the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, the Lord covered their sins. Amen. What do you mean? He covered their nakedness with skins. Where did we get the skins from? An animal. We believe it was a lamb. We don't know, but we believe it was a lamb. But wait a minute. What happened to that lamb or that animal? Their blood was shed. And see, sin as a penalty. Not only that, blood has to be shed. Are you listening? And so through all the, the, the years and the ages, all these religions had blood sacrifices, but none of those could take away the sins of the world. But because it was man that sinned. And all, yes, they sacrificed people, but they did it for evil intentions and evil reasons. But Yah said, a body thou hast prepared. And oh, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. What did he do? He sacrificed an offering. Lord, you didn't want those things anymore. You were not happy with those things because it did not solve the sin problem. But Yahshua came. Yes, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, came without sin. And as I said earlier, he gave his life. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. For God, I said, is loving. For God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So today, if you understand that that was the remedy. That there was no other way but for Jesus, our Yeshua, to give his life for us, to pay the price for us. Lord, for all sin, all souls that sin shall die. Are you listening? So the Lord who did not sin came and died. He didn't have to die, but he knew that if he died, he could pay our penalty. And so he made a way for us. Listen, with all the things going on in this in this world, with the virus, Lord, with vaccines, with the mark of the beast coming. Are you listening? And it is coming. Understand that there's only one way out. And you gotta hear it today. You got wait, wait what's today? Today is what you have. You have tomorrow, it ain't promising to you. You got today. And so today, if you hear his voice through me, understanding that your way out is repentance of sin, being born of the water, being baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. What? For the remission of sins. Lord, where the, where the shedding of blood is, you know, there is remission of sin. What blood? The blood of Yeshua. Not the blood of, blood of chickens. It can't do it. Not the blood of goats. It can't do it. Not the blood of bulls. It can't do it. Even if your life is sacrificed, it can't redeem anybody. Why? Because you've sinned. And if you die, guess what? You are in trouble. If you die without accepting what Yeshua did on that cross by shedding his blood and taking the remedy that he gave, it's going to be shame on you. It's going to be sad. It's, it, it's sad. You know, you're not going to make it. So you need to hear the Lord's voice in this. Today, if you would hear don't harden your heart. Don't fight it. Don't, 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 don't push it away. Don't discount it. Because maybe all you have is today. Because that's all we all ever have. Are you listening? The scripture says, today, 
if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts like our forefathers did. And they, and they were provoked in the wilderness. Amen? They provoked God, rather. God was blessing them, taking them out of slavery, taking them out of bondage, and then taking them to a promised land. But they provoked Yah. They basically spit in his face. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Like that movie uh, that they just came out, but I'm not going to go into and give it a name or nothing. This foolish young man cursed God. Don't you curse God and die. Don't you be like Job's wife. She says, curse God and die. Just because life is not going the way you want it to. Don't you curse your only hope. She says, curse God and die, Job. You're sick. You lost everything. Our kids are dead. They die. All this happened. Curse God and that. Some of you want to curse God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you curse him. Don't you curse him. Don't you commit suicide. You don't have to do it. He did it for you. He already died for you. Don't you die. Don't you kill yourself. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. This is all you got right now. This is all you got. All you got is today. Look here. He said, don't, 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 don't delay another day. You know what you need to do. What? Repent of your sin. Get baptized in water in the name of Jesus. Get filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And the Spirit of God gives it on you. Don't let your heart. Get hard through the deceitfulness of sin. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't get caught up with <laughs> all that you're trying to accomplish. I got to accomplish this. I got to do this in this life. Do you have more than today? You don't know. You don't know. People buy life insurance knowing that they're going to die. Amen? They buy it. Where's your eternal life and joy? Listen, all you got is today. Don't be like the man that tore down his bones. The Lord spoke to him in the book of Luke, chapter verse chapter 20. We're talking about this night. Lord have mercy. But God said to him, thou fool. Lord have mercy. Thou fool. This night, Lord, today. This night. Lord have mercy. This night. The soul. Shall be required of thee. Then who shall be. These things. Who, who shall these things be. Which thou hast provided. What are you going to do. This night. Don't 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 let the Lord say this night to you. Don't don't don't, don't get there. Don't, don't find yourself in that situation. Don't allow the Lord to say. This night. Hmm. Lord, today, all you got is today. But you don't want to hear God say, this night, your soul is required of you. Because, because here it was, it was over for that man. It was this night. It was this night. It was this night that his soul was required of him. There he was. There he was. This night. This night. This night. Night. He had spent the entire day. What are you doing with your day? What, do you, what have you done with your whole life as far as your soul is concerned? I know, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, you made a lot of money. And that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. He was not upset with the man because he was successful. The Lord blessed him to be successful. The Lord blessed him to have great provisions and, and what have you. But he was responsible for taking what the Lord had given in this day, he was saying, oh, Lord, if the Lord, oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. This day, if you hear his voice, hard not your heart. But this night came. Mm -mm -mm. This night came on him. And the Lord said to him, you fool. This night. Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Mm, mm, mm. Are you listening? So, today, 
this day. Lord, have me this night, rather, and this day. Ah, the Lord, Yeshua, I told you why he came. But I want to give you a little bit from what he read and what he spoke about. Amen? And what he said. Luke chapter 4 and verse 17 through 20. I'm going to read that quickly and then we're going to get ready to close out because I told you this is going to be a quick one. He says, and there was delivered unto him, Yahshua that is, the book of, of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Listen to this. To preach, he's talking about himself, the gospel to the poor. Look, there's look, some folk going through some stuff now. Look at here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're talking about this day. Are, are you listening? Listen here. Some folk are, are going through some changes and some things that are happening. He said, to preach some good, I got some good news to you, poor folk. I got, I, I got some good news. I got, I got some good news for you. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, somebody's hearts have been broken through, certainly through this year. Certainly through this year, we got some more and more poor people. Certainly through this year, hearts have been broken. We've lost so many people. But he said, I've got some good news for you. I'm going to heal your broken heart. Ooh, Lord Al Green said, how can you mend a broken heart? That's because he ain't Yeshua. He's not Jesus. Jesus can mend. That broken heart. So many of our hearts have been broken. So many of us have been in a situation where our hearts are broken. Even right now, I can heal the broken heart. He said, I'm going to preach deliverance to those that are captive. I'm, I'm here to set you free. I'm going to preach deliverance to you. I'm going to do this. Listen, look, we got something good going on here. Wait a minute. And it's in this day. Are you listening to me? Look at here. He says, and I'm going to recover the sight to the blind. Those that are physically blind. Those that are spiritually blind. Those that can't see their way in one way or another. Lord, have me some can't see that the blessing is right in front of you. I'm going to open up your eyes. Hallelujah. I'm going to set at liberty them. That I bruised. I preached this quite a while ago. Amen. Lord, how are you going to set somebody free that's bruised? Well, you, you got to understand that a bruise is something that normally you just leave it where it's at and it will normally heal on its own. Well, there's that physical bruise that will heal on its own. But this is a different type of bruise. This is an emotional bruising. This is a spiritual bruising. And the Lord says, I'm going to set at liberty. I'm going to set you free from the bruising that has happened in your life. Somebody that bruised you and, and, and got you stuck. Oh, you listen, that got you bound. That got you where you can't go forward or uh, go backwards. You're stuck. But he said, I'm going to preach the deliverance and the coming of sight to the blind, but I'm going to set at liberty them that are rude. Are you listening? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and gave it to the minister. That's what our Yeshua did. And sat down what did he do? And all the eyes were fastened. Oh, he knew how to, he knew how not just to make an entrance. He knew how to make an exit. Are you listening to me? He knew how to get our attention. There he was. He, he gave the book to the minister and he sat down and all eyes and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue uh huh. We're fasting on him. You're like, is that all he gonna say? And of course he wasn't finished. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled 
in your ear. Are you listening? This day, all of those things that I, that was promised to you, all these things that you needed, oh, oh, glory, this is fulfilled. Why? Because he was there. Because he was alive. Are you listening? Because he showed up. Let me tell you, all you got is today, this night, and this day, and today, if you're hearing his voice, don't back away from it. Don't harden your heart. Don't be deceived. Don't let anything stop you from repenting of your sins. Getting baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Listen, today, this night, and this day. Listen, if, if you hear his voice, you won't have, and you, and you obey it, you won't have to worry about this night. Are you listening? And not only that, this to, will make this day, every day, is going to be your day. Are you listening to me? And then, after the resurrection, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. We're going to live with him forever. Are you listening to me? Today, this night, and this day. Tell me, today, this night, and this day. We love you. We love you. And we want to tell you again, if you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, contact us. Get in touch with us. Go to my website, www.stevebwalters.com. www.stevebwalters.com. Drop a note here. Inbox me. We love you. May heaven smile upon you. And may the Lord our God be with you. In Jesus' name. Precious and adorable name. God bless.